Good morning to all. I will be taking the chapter on Haemophilus. As we are doing the gram-negative organisms, Haemophilus is also a gram-negative organism, but it is a cocobacilli. Haemophilus is known to reside as one of the normal floras in the throat of the humans. There are various species of Haemophilus of which I think you have heard of. The Haemophilus influenzae is the most important one and it is known to cause most of the infections by Haemophilus. The most important infection is meningitis which is commonly seen in the children. A little bit on the histori historical aspect of Haemophilus. It was during the pandemic of influenza in the year 1889, which ran up to 1892, that this organism was first isolated from the throat samples of the infected individuals. It was this person named Richard Pfeiffer who identified and named this organism as Haemophilus influenzae. It is known as Haemophilus because it is a blood loving organism since it requires certain growth factors which are available in the blood. It was later in the year 1933 that these three individuals disproved the association of the pandemic of influenza being caused by a bacteria. They proved it that it was caused by a virus and not by the bacteria. But still Haemophilus influenzae continued to be called as Haemophilus influenzae. This is the taxonomical classification of Haemophilus influenzae. It belongs to the genus Haemophilus. There are various species under this genus. They are Haemophilus influenzae, Haemophilus aegypticus, Haemophilus hemolyticus, Haemophilus ducrei, Afrophilus, para influenzae, para hemolyticus, and para afrophilus of which Haemophilus influenzae is the most important one which we need to know as it causes majority of the infections. There's other headings under which we need to know about Haemophilus influenzae, the morphological aspects of it, how we classify Haemophilus influenzae, the epidemiological features, what are the different manifestations of Haemophilus influenzae, the pathogenesis, lab diagnosis, how we can prevent infections caused by Haemophilus influenzae, the treatment and the mechanisms of drug resistance. Coming to the morphology, as already told, Haemophilus influenzae is a gram-negative coccobacilli, which exhibits this property of pleomorphism. Pleomorphism is the organism can exhibit multiple morphologies at one time. Approximately, they measure 1 into 0.3 microns in size. They are non-motile and non-sporing. Coming to the classification, Haemophilus influenzae is classified based on the capsular polysaccharide. If they possess a capsule, they are capsulated. If they do not possess a capsule, they are known as non-capsulated. Further, the capsulated strains are further divided into six types designated with the small alphabetical letters A, B, C, D, E and F. Of which, again, the most important one is Haemophilus influenzae type B. It is because the nature of the capsule is slightly different when compared to the other five. It is made up of polyribosyl ribitol phosphate. The sugar components are a little different. The type B is the one which causes majority of the infections. It is a protective antigen. When I say protective antigen, it means that it has the ability to stimulate the production of antibodies against it. Type B is also the one which is known to cause the invasive kind of Haemophilus influenzae infections. And because it is a protective antigen, this has been incorporated in the Haemophilus influenzae type B vaccine. 
we can also classify haemophilus influenzae based on the biochemical reactions into eight biotypes depending on whether they give a positive or negative reaction for indole whether they possess the enzymes urease and ornithine decarboxylase there are eight biotypes haemophilus influenzae has certain typical properties such as they are very delicate organisms which die within a span of 30 minutes when exposed to temperature of 55 degrees celsius they are very sensitive to low temperatures such as 4 degrees celsius therefore it is always recommended we should never refrigerate a sample which we could suspect that it can contain haemophilus influenzae like i told you it already causes meningitis so the sample that we collect in meningitis is the CSF sample, we never refrigerate a CSF sample. Coming to the growth factors, there are two types of growth factors which the Haemophilus influenzae requires for it to grow and multiply. So they are the X factor and the V factor which are present in the blood compartment. So what is this X factor? It is a heat stable factor. It is required for the synthesis of the bacterial enzymes such as cytochrome, oxidase and catalase which is required for the aerobic respiration of the bacteria. And how do we identify the presence of this X factor is by a test called as the porphyrin test. Coming to the V factor, it is a heat labile factor also known as the NAD. What is its function? It acts as an hydrogen acceptor in the oxidation reduction process. And we identify the presence of this V factor by a method which is called as satellitism, which I will be telling to you in detail. Now we will see the epidemiological features of Haemophilus influenzae. Haemophilus influenzae is a typical human bacteria. It cannot infect animals. So the reservoir for Haemophilus influenzae is always the humans and the asymptomatic carriers. Humans I mean by the infected individuals. How do these organisms get transmitted? That is through the respiratory droplets. It is more commonly seen in the winter months, the colder times of the year and predisposing factor whom does it affect age first of all it mainly affects the children then it can spread faster in overcrowded places on direct coming in direct contact with the case and also the immunocompromised individuals are more prone for getting the infections of haemophilus influenzae type b how do these infections manifest? So we can broadly classify the infections which are caused by type B into invasive and non-invasive type. So what are the features of the invasive? The invasive infections are mostly caused by the capsulated strains of Haemophilus influenzae that is the six types A, B, C, D up to F of which again type B is the most important. It is more commonly seen among the children. Haemophilus influenzae acts as the primary pathogen and the route of spread is usually hematogenous that is through blood. What are the infections which are caused by the invasive strains? Commonly it is known to cause meningitis. Again it is in the children between 2 months to 2 years of age and it is also known to cause laryngoepiglottitis conjunctivitis and also bacteremia. Coming to the infections which are caused by the non-invasive strains or the non-invasive infections which are usually caused by the non-capsulated strains of Haemophilus influenzae, it commonly affects the adults and it is usually a secondary infection. That is, it appears secondary to some other bacterial or a viral infection. And how does it spread? It is through direct or local invasion. So what are the infections which are spread through local invasion is otitis media, sinusitis and chronic bronchitis. Since all these regions lie in close proximity to the nasopharynx wherein the haemophilus usually reside as the normal flora.
This is just a table which shows the different causative agents of meningitis depending or classified uh, based on the different age groups. You can see as it has already been highlighted, Haemophilus influenzae type B usually affects the children between 2 months to 2 years of age. And again we can see Haemophilus influenzae which causes meningitis again in adults as well, two year, above 2 years also but it is the last option there. Coming to the pathogenesis, we deal we will be dealing it under the virulence factors and what are the different events that take place. So what are the different virulence factors? This is again a table wherein it shows the virulence factor along with the different functions that they perform. A capsule as it has been repeated many times, the function of a capsule is it inhibits phagocytosis. So obviously when phagocytosis is inhibited, the organism tends to stay in the body for a longer time. Then you have the adhesins. The property of an adhesin is it directly adheres tightly to the receptor cells and in this case it is the epithelial cells of the nasopharynx that is nothing but the mucosal cells. Then there is an all virulence factor which is also called as opacity associated protein A. The function of this is it causes pharyngeal colonization and also it is responsible for the opaque colonies which are seen on the culture plates. Then we have IgA protease. This is an enzyme which causes a breakdown of the immunoglobulin A which is present in the oropharynx. Then we have the lipooligosaccharide which acts as an endotoxin and this results in the damage to the respiratory epithelium leading to bacteremic spread. So from the throat it directly enters into the bloodstream because of this virulence factor. Then we have other membrane proteins which are numbered from P1 to P6. Coming to the sequence of events, this is basically about meningitis. So Haemophilus influenzae enters a human host through respiratory route. Once it enters, it needs to tightly adhere to its receptor cells. That is nothing but the epithelial cells in the nasopharynx and that is brought about by the pili. Once they get tightly adhered, they start releasing the lipooligosaccharide which causes damage to the respiratory epithelium thereby impairing the ciliary function and at the same time the IgA1 protease is also released which causes breakdown of the immunoglobulin. All this results in damage to the respiratory epithelium. This leads to increase in the bacterial load and also sometimes leads to a viral infection which can potentiate the bacterial infection that can invade the mucosa and enter into the bloodstream. That is nothing but bacteremia. Once the respiratory mucosa is damaged, these organisms gain entry into the bloodstream leading to bacteremia. So what happens once bacteremia sets in? So since the organisms are already present in the blood, they slowly start moving towards the meninges, they cross the blood-brain barrier and cause the meningeal invasion. So there is multiplication within the subarachnoid space resulting in an inflammation. In particular, it is the meninges which gets affected resulting in meningitis and further it leads to neuronal injury. So if the previous slide was a little difficult to understand. This is a more simplified slide which explains the same thing which is nothing but the entire pathogenesis of meningitis. This is a pictorial representation which explains the three different phases. First is the nasopharyngeal phase wherein they just adhere to it. Then there is invasion further. Then they enter into the bloodstream resulting in bacteremia. Once there is bacteremia, the organism crosses the blood-brain barrier and causes inflammation of the meninges, resulting in meningitis. Coming to the lab diagnosis for Haemophilus influenzae, depending on the type of infection, we could collect the appropriate sample. So if 
a child comes with symptoms of headache vomiting fever the appropriate sample to be collected is the csf after the csf is collected we can also take the blood sample wherein we can find the organism in the blood as well we can also collect the nasopharyngeal swab because they are found as a resident flora in the nasopharyngeal swab whereas in the other infections such as the otitis media we would collect an ear swab or an ear discharge sometimes a sputum sample can also be collected in cases of bronchitis if it is a case of conjunctivitis then we would also collect the conjunctival swab so depending on whatever the presentation is we will collect that sample so what do we do in the lab diagnosis we subject the sample for microscopy that is we do a gram stain then we grow the organism by culture we do an antigenic detection and lastly if all these methods fail we go in for the molecular detection so on microscopy we will do a gram stain as you can see in the picture we will find a typical gram negative coccobacilli which is highly pleomorphic then we go in for the culture the most appropriate media that can be used for haemophilus influenzae is the chocolate agar because in chocolate agar it is heated up to 75 degrees celsius so there is availability of both the growth factors that is the x and the v factor the other selective media which can be used are the leventhal's blood agar and the fildes blood agar these are nothing but blood agar which is made special by inactivating the enzyme nadas by adding either the peptic digest in the fildes agar or by just heating the agar which is the leventhal's agar so by doing this we make the v factor to be available for the organism to grow the other media that we use is the blood agar wherein we show this phenomenon of satellitism so what is satellitism it is usually asked for three marks for you so what you need to know is the media that we use for showing satellitism is the blood agar what we do in satellitism is we make a central streak of the staphylococcus aureus as you can see in the picture then a perpendicular streak of haemophilus influenzae is made and we incubate this plate overnight at 37 degrees celsius the next day we make an interpretation on seeing the plate we find that there are larger colonies of haemophilus influenzae towards a streak of staphylococcus aureus and as the colonies move away from the streak line the colonies appear to be smaller so what is the reason for this as i had already told you haemophilus influenzae requires two factors the x and the v factor x factor is already available in the blood agar plate whereas v factor is not very easily available as it is embedded within the rbcs so we the rbcs has to be lysed for the v factor to be available so but this v factor can also be released by certain bacteria for example staphylococcus aureus so this property has been used in satellitism so staphylococcus aureus releases the v factor and as s x factor is already available in the blood agar the colonies appear larger as the concentration of the v factor decreases away from the streak line it results in the smaller sized colonies this is what is satellitism so after doing the culture we can also know which kind of biotype of haemophilus influenzae it is depending on the biochemical reactions like by putting up for indole urease and ornithine decarboxylase we can also put for the porphyrin test antigenic detection we can use the different agglutination tests like the latex agglutination coagglutination and also use the counter immuno electrophoresis method if we fail to identify the organism by the above methods then we go in for the pcr coming to the prophylaxis for haemophilus influenzae it can be of two types 
that is chemoprophylaxis or immunoprophylaxis chemoprophylaxis is by giving the drug and this is usually not given to everybody it is only given to the high risk individuals such as the healthcare workers who can directly come in contact with the infected individuals or the family members of an infected case so what is the drug that we give here it is rifampin or also known as rifampicin the dosage is different in case of children and adults in children it is 20 mg per kg once a day for 3 days in case of adults it is 600 mg twice a day for 2 days so what is immunoprophylaxis it is nothing but the vaccine there are two types of vaccines the purified prp prp stands for polyribosyl ribitol phosphate it is hemophilus influenzae type b okay and then the newer advanced vaccine which is known as the conjugate vaccines so what is prp purified prp it is polysaccharide in nature the property of this is that it is effective in children only above 2 years of age because the mechanism of immune response that it follows is t cell independent kind of immune response so they found that this vaccine was not very effective as antibody with less functional activity was being produced so they came up with the advanced vaccines that is nothing but the conjugate vaccine so along with the prp some protein conjugate is added to make it more effective so it is nothing but carbohydrate is nothing but the prp and it is all conjugated with a protein component they found that this vaccine elicited a t cell dependent kind of immune response in which the memory cells are being released so they found it to be more effective than just plain purified prp and also that this vaccine can be given to children less than 2 years also they found that it gives a good booster response and the antibody which is produced in this using this vaccine was more functional these are a few examples of the conjugate vaccine the prp t prp d prp omp and prp hp oc in india hemophilus influenzae type b vaccine is given as part of the national immunization schedule to every child who is born in india this vaccine is given it is given under the name of pentacil pentacil it has five different vaccines which is given in a single injection so what are the different or the five different types of vaccine it is the hemophilus influenzae type b which is shortly referred to as hib hib vaccine then we have the hepatitis b dpt i'm sure you all know of dpt vaccine so all these are incorporated in a single vial and it is given as a single in injection under the name of pentacil vaccine when is it given it is given at 6 10 and 14 weeks of birth and the route how it is administered is is by the intramuscular route coming to the treatment any person who has been infected with hemophilus influenzae the, these are the treatment options earlier days ampicillin was a drug of choice but the organism started to release the enzyme beta lactamase so therefore ampicillin failed to act on this organism then they started using chloramphenicol <coughs> as the drug of choice but invariably the organisms again started producing the enzyme chloramphenicol acetyl transferase 2 nowadays we give the third generation cephalosporins and among them it is the ceftriaxone and the cefotaxime which are very effective on cases of meningitis if they fail to act then we can give the macrolides such as and fluoroquinolones such as levofloxacin macrolides such as amikacin so that was all about hemophilus influenzae and in particular type b 
coming to the next species that is Haemophilus aegypticus. This organism is also known as cock and weeks bacilli because it was identified by these two individuals you, you can see in the picture. It is also known as cock weeks bacillus. This organism is known to produce purulent conjunctivitis and also what is known as Brazilian purpuric fever. A little bit on Haemophilus ducre. This again can be asked as 3 marks for you. Again, this is a gram negative cocobacilli. It is named after the person who first identified it, that is ducre. He identified this bacilli from the chancroid lesions. Haemophilus ducre is known to cause a sexually transmitted disease, which is referred to as chancroid or the soft chancre in contrast to the hard chancre which is produced in syphilis which i think in the coming chapters you will hear about so the morphology of haemophilus ducre it is short and ovoid measuring 1.5 into 0.6 microns in size and it has a very classical uh, presentation under the gram stain it appears like a railroad track appearance like you can see in the picture you can see it's a black and white picture but you can see the classical arrangement of these organisms and you can also see the presence of puzzles. It is a venereal disease and the lesions are non-indurated, they are very painful and the lesions have irregular edges. How we can make a diagnosis of this is first of all with just the history then we can collect the sample subject it for gram stain and look for the arrangement then grow the organism and also by putting up for biochemical reactions treatment the drugs of choice is azithromycin this completes the chapter on haemophilus thank you